Hi, I'm Robin Bremer and you're watching Walks with God and today we're continuing our series on how to raise the dead and I'm teaching from my book and sharing from my book. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Feed my people joy, kingdom living for end times. Today we're going over part two on how to raise the dead. And the actual chapter is on page 209, chapter 15, and it's called Kingdom Authority to Raise the Dead. So what I wanted to go over right now was to show you that um, Jesus operated on the earth as a man, not as God. Everything he did, raising the dead, healing the sick, casting out demons, walking on water, um, stilling the, uh, calming the storms, multiplying the bread, uh, changing water into wine, everything he did, he did as a man in right relationship to God, not as God. He did not do it because he was God. He did it because he was this last Adam. He was created in God's image, just like the first Adam was. He lived a sinless life, and he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, and that's what gave him um, the power to do what he did. Let me show you that and prove to you that Jesus put aside everything of his godly attributes and walked the earth as a man and did everything as a man. James 1.13 says, For God cannot be tempted with evil. But if you look at, take a look at Luke 4, 2 and 13, it says, Jesus being tempted 40 days of the devil. Now, if Jesus was God, and it said in the Bible that he was tempted of the devil, and God cannot be tempted with evil, see, so, so Jesus was not on the earth as God. Jesus was on the earth as a man, anointed with God. Romans 8, 3 says, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Hebrews 4, 15 says, but Jesus was in all points tempted like we are. Okay? And, and James 1, 13, it says, God cannot be tempted. Okay? So Jesus was tempted, and it says it several different times here. So Jesus was not operating on this earth as God. He was operating as the Son of God, which is what we are also, and he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. Excuse me. Acts 2.22 says, Jesus of Nazareth, a man, not God, a man, approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him. Okay? So, to show you that Jesus was God, but he put aside of all his godly attributes, operated on earth as a man in right relationship with God, anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. Okay, now some people might say, well, God's sovereign. He can choose who he can raise, who can be raised from the dead. Yes, God is sovereign, but he gave man all authority to subdue, rule, and have dominion on all the earth, and that's Genesis 1.26. And um, he gave man all authority and told them to rule, subdue, and have dominion. Now, he's not going to come back into the earth and, and take the authority back from us. He gave us a 6,000 year lease to rule and reign on this planet, which by the way is about up because we're going to get raptured out of here. Um, okay, Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I have set before you life and death, therefore choose life. God is sovereign, but he told us to choose life. Now, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, we just went over that Genesis 1, 26. Um, Okay, so Jesus went to hell and he conquered the devil for us. He rose um, from the dead with the keys to hell and death. Jesus took away the keys from Satan. But how did Satan get the keys in the first place? Why did, did the devil have, devil have the keys to hell and death? Well, when God gave Adam and Eve all authority and dominion over all the earth, that included everything. Um, but when Satan tricked them and took their authority, he took everything that was theirs. That's why there's sickness, disease, poverty, lack, fear, death, destroying weather, um, and ev all that bad stuff in the earth now is because Satan is the god of this world. He's running this show. He's running the earth. Um, uh, and as Christians stand up and take authority over sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and fear because the kingdom is in them and death, um, we are taking back the kingdom of the earth. That's one of the reasons we're supposed to raise the dead. Okay, Revelation 1.18 says that Jesus now has the keys to hell and death. And he gave all power and authority to us. And that's at the end of uh, either Matthew, Mark, Luke. Um, okay, and um, death is under our feet. Um, let's see. Death and life is in the power of our tongue. That's Proverbs 18.21. 
we're creating in God's image, and God's image and likeness is us creating things with his mouth. If you go back to Genesis 1, everything God did and said before he created us in his image, it talks about that. Now, the, the devil <clears throat> can kill, steal, and destroy people on the earth um, because he has a right to them because they're his kids. But everyone on the earth who is a Christian who has been born again and who is now God's child has authority and power and dominion over the devil and over um, everything that um, he brought onto the earth. Uh, God's kids have authority over that. Okay, um, let's see here. Proverbs 26, 2 says, As the bird as the bird by wandering, as the sparrow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. In other words, when somebody, the curse on the earth, or a curse cannot come upon you unless you open the door to it. And the people on the earth who do not have Jesus in their heart, they're already under the curse. Um, everybody's under the curse. But it's like Jesus gave us the umbrella to stop the curse from coming onto us when we receive him into our heart and we also have authority and dominion over the curse to change the whole community with that authority. Now Jesus, um, God gave us authority over everything on the earth. He told us to take authority over it and subdue it and death is a thing. He also says the name of Jesus is, above, is the name above all names. Well the death is a name and at the name of Jesus everything will bow includes death. Everything on the earth and under the earth will bow at the name of Jesus. And we bear the name of Jesus. We have a legal authority to use that. So God put all things under our feet, which is Hebrews 2, 8. Thou hast put all things in subject under his feet, and we are his feet. For in that he put all things subject under him, he left nothing. That means nothing, including death, that is not put under him. So if all things are under our feet, that means death is under our feet. If all things bow to the name of Jesus, that, that means that uh, the name of Jesus, they will bow. Okay, um, uh, let's take a look at Romans 6, 9. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death has no more dominion over him. Likewise, reckon yourself also to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God. Okay, likewise. So, we have authority over death. When Jesus rose from the dead, he showed his authority to, of dominion over death. When Jesus came to the earth, he ruled over death, and he conquered death. And now through his grace and righteousness, he has given us the authority to rule and reign over death with life. Romans 5.17, For if by one man's offense death reigned, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by Christ Jesus. Okay, so through the finished work of Jesus, we have authority over death. Uh, Romans 8 says, The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So death does not have dominion over you. You have authority over that. But if the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me and raised up Christ from the dead, shall also give life to my body by the Spirit that dwells in me. Romans 8:11. Now the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead, and that same Spirit lives in me. It can raise me from the dead, or use me to raise someone else from the dead, because it's the Spirit who gives life. And that's John 6:63. 6, the words that I speak to you are spirit and life. So uh, Jesus always raised people from the dead by speaking to them and commanding them to come up from the dead. The scripture below, let's see. Um, Romans 1 4 and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead, you know that you're serving a live God, a God of um, supernatural power. A lot of us Christians just go around and we think that we can show other people that we are, uh, that God is alive and that we serve a good God by doing good and right things. Even people who are not Christians can do good and right things. You know, when we are God's kids, we are created in His image. We should be walking in supernatural power and authority and dominion in supernatural. When we have a relationship with a supernatural God and we're supernatural kids of a supernatural God, we're supernatural. We should be doing good and right and moral things, but we should be doing more than that. 
We should be healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, cleansing the leopards, preaching the gospel to the poor, being prosperous, being able to back up the gospel, being tithers and sowers. We should be supernatural. Okay. Um, okay. Um, now that's it that I'm going to do today. Tomorrow we're going to do part three, and we're going to talk, talk about, and I'm going to show you scriptures. Well, let me just finish this up real quick. I'm going to just show you some real quick, some scriptures that shows that we have the right to choose to live or die. Paul, in his scriptures, is trying to decide, eh, do I want to live or do I want to die? I don't know. Both are good. He says, what should I choose? He doesn't say, what should God choose for me? What He says, what should I choose? What should I choose? I don't know. So now, also, Christ shall be manifest in my body, whether it is by life or by death, that I might take it again. He, he's saying, what, okay, wait a minute, I got two scriptures mixed up. Philippians 1.20, what, what I shall choose, I don't know. So now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether by life or death. Yet, what should I choose? So Paul didn't know what to choose, and it's up to us to choose. John 10.17, therefore does my Father love me, because I lay down my life. See, Jesus could lay down his life and take his life back up. And so can we. John 10, 15. As the Lord knoweth me, so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for my sheep. Okay? Deuteronomy 30, 19. I have set before you life and death, therefore choose life. See, you have the power over life and death. Because death is an enemy and it comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Just because you have a sickness or a disease or something happens to kill the body, you, it does not have to stay dead. You have the authority, you have the power, and you have the dominion to raise people from the dead. It is an enemy. It is not from God. Jesus showed you how to do it. Get your faith built up. You know who you are in Christ and walk in that power. Okay, notice the devil had the power of death. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all, all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now, if you think that you, you're going to die whenever you're going to die, you're always going to be afraid to live because you're afraid to die. When you know that when death comes, that you have authority over death, it's the spirit, then you will not be afraid to live your life. Okay, now, of course, some people just let them go and let them die because they get tired of fighting. They want to go home to be with the Lord, and they just get tired of the fight, and they want to go. And some people you just need to let go. I've had seven experiences or seven opportunities to raise the dead. I've only actually touched three people that were dead. And two or three and tried to raise them from the dead. The other ones were from a distance or uh, were <clears throat> just killed like up my street and down the other way at one time. Uh, just different situations and I have in my book I talk about that. But um, take opportunities when you come across a situation or if you have uh, access to the morgue and uh, legally you can't do certain things or a funeral home, you know, just be legal and respectful. But uh, raise your dead animals. You, you got legal right to do that too. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, that's it for today. And tomorrow I will go on and talk about how Jesus gave us the commandment to raise the dead. And that's really exciting. So my name is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God. And I'm out for today.